Okay, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to replace the capacitors on the soundboard uh, in the Game Gear. <coughs> um, it's a very common problem with the Game Gear for it to have no sound from the speaker and also no sound from the headphones. So if you can see here there's five capacitors on the, the Game Gear uh, soundboard here. There's two small ones here and here and then there's three larger ones. The main cause of the no sound problems is the two small capacitors. This one here up beside where the speaker plugs in, this feeds the speaker and this one down in the bottom corner here feeds the headphones. So you'll find a lot of the time that just the external speaker doesn't work and the sound works fine through the headphones. So this is the main culprit. These other three capacitors can be changed as well but I recommend that you start with these two small capacitors. If that doesn't fix your problem or if the problem still isn't perfect then you need to go on and change these other three. I'm going to show you here how to desolder these capacitors because it is very fiddly. One thing you will need to note about capacitors is they have two readings. Hopefully you'll be able to see on one of the bigger capacitors here. We'll look at this one here. We'll just look at this one here. Um, there's two values for every capacitor. There is a microfarad rating and a voltage rating. So if you can see on this one, it has 106.3V. So that's a 100 microfarad capacitor and the rating, voltage rating is 6.3 volts. So every capacitor has its own rating. You probably won't be able to see that small one there. It is uh, 47 microfarads and 4 volts. So you need to get the microfarad rating exact. Um, so I'll need to replace this one with a 100 microfarad capacitor. The voltage rating needs to be the same or higher than the capacitor you're replacing. So if you can imagine uh, this capacitor is rating 6.3 volts so there's going to be at the very most 6.3 volts run through this capacitor. So if I put a capacitor in with less than that, say 5 volts, then 6.3 volts actually run through it, it will blow the capacitor because it's too high a voltage for the rating of the capacitor. But if I put a capacitor in with a 100 volt rating, then it'll be fine, because you're not exceeding the voltage rating of that capacitor. But like I said, the uh, microfarad rating does need to be precise. So when you're replacing any capacitor, just look at the ratings on it and it will say two different ratings, 100 on this one and 6.3 volts. So that's the easiest way to replace any capacitor is to just look at it because they're usually all marked with their ratings. A good tip is to add a little bit of solder to your solder points before you start. This uh, reflows the solder into a mixture of the fresh stuff and the old stuff and makes it that bit easier uh, to get off. It actually lowers the melting temperature of the solder. So it's going to be really awkward for me here to show you this and actually do it at the same time. I've changed the camera angle here guys so hopefully you'll be able to see a bit better. 
this is the capacitor here I'm going to be trying to desolder and uh, just this wee shiny part here is our first solder point so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of solder to that you need to be very careful here guys because we're working in a really small area here and you don't want to touch any of these plastic sockets with your soldering iron or you're going to melt them so it is very fiddly but just take your time and uh, hopefully you'll not have any problems the trick is getting the actual solder point hot enough to take the solder Basically, if it's not hot enough to take the solder, it's not hot enough to actually safely remove the capacitor from the board. So hopefully you could see that. I did actually get a wee bit of solder attached to the solder pad here. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Now you're not going to be able to see it from that angle. But uh, it's the best I can do, unfortunately. Next, uh, it helps if you have a long fingernail here. I actually uh, hook my fingernail over the capacitor and then I heat up the solder pad. Apply a gentle bit of pressure until the capacitor lifts up. Now it'll only lift up a small amount because it's still attached on this side. What you then need to do is turn it board round and do the same on the other side. Again being very careful not to uh, melt anything that you shouldn't be melting. So uh, as you can see the capacitors uh, bent over there. Um, you do need to be very careful with this and just take a little bit of the time working back and forward on both sides of the capacitor until it finally comes loose just like that and you really don't want to apply too much pressure at all because you have a really good chance of ripping these traces right off the board here if you can see the bottom of the capacitor here you can see where the legs they come out of the capacitor this way and then they're folded over on themselves which is why it's so awkward to sol un unsolder these things. So next we want to replace this capacitor with one of the same rating. So we're going to cut the legs short on this capacitor. Because these are standard capacitors you will have to do a little bit of arranging to get these all in and land flat. You'll notice on the replacement capacitor that one of the legs is slightly longer than the other and on the capacitor itself there's a grey stripe so the rest of the capacitor is black and there's a grey stripe which points at one of the legs this is the negative leg which is the shorter one so you do have a positive and a negative which you need to get right as you're soldering this back in now luckily enough on the Game Gear board it is marked positive and negative. If you can see just here, um, a point with my little bit of solder here, just here there is a plus. So this is your plus pad and on this side is your negative. So just snip these legs off here. leaving uh, a little bit of length so that uh, you still have room to work with it. Before you solder this capacitor in you will need to add a little bit of solder to these two pads. This makes life a lot easier and uh, is essential basically. So we'll go ahead and heat up the pad and add a little blob of solder to it and that gives us something to 
set the leg of the capacitor into. We'll do the same on the other pad here. Just like that. Now you don't want these two pads to be touching each other. So you need to make sure you don't bridge them across. And then we can go ahead and solder the capacitor in. Again, making sure that you get your plus and minus in the right position. This can be an extremely fiddly job, especially uh, when you're trying not to get your hands in the way of the camera. So you just solder one leg in first, and then do the other one after. You do need a good steady hand while you're doing this. If you've got the shakes, it's probably best if you don't do this. So that's our first capacitor soldered into place. Again, it is sitting up at the minute, but once I replace this capacitor, I'll be able to lay it down flat. So basically you want all your capacitors laying as flat as possible across the board. And you just do exactly the same thing for the rest of the capacitors. Uh, you really want to concentrate on the two small ones, replace the two small ones and then test it, plug it all back into the game gear and check if there's sound coming out of the speaker and the headphones. If you're not fussed about the headphones, don't worry about this one, just replace this one capacitor and test it. If there's any crackling or if your volume isn't nice and loud, you need to go ahead and replace these three capacitors here. Here we have the board once all the capacitors have been replaced. As you can see it's uh, not the tidiest but really you don't need it to be too tidy as long as your capacitors aren't sticking straight up in the air because the little bit of metal shielding that we removed actually sits across this so you need to get them down flush enough for that piece of shielding to sit across the top of them. And that's pretty much how you replace all the capacitors on the soundboard. If you have any questions or you're having problems, feel free to contact me and I'll try my best to uh, guide you through this.